This lesson now uh, is part of chapter three. So welcome to chapter three. And we are looking at uh, data management. So we're looking at different types of graphs. So this works for 3.1 for grade seven and grade eight. So you'll be watching this video two years in a row. So grade seven and grade eight, we're looking at now data management and different types of graphs. So the first graph that we're gonna be looking at is the bar graph. So if we can see here, the bar graph is, the main usage of a bar graph is to compare completely different categories. And this means that these categories can actually be mixed up or you could put them in different orders, um, but there's no relationship between each of the categories except that they all fall under the same kind of genre. So for example, in this example, we have five different schools um, and we look at uh, the basketball, basketball ticket prices, well, it says six schools, that should be five schools, Dick basketball ticket prices for schools. So we have the price of the ticket over here. So this is the price of the ticket. And then we had the five schools. We could actually put these schools in any different order and it would still work. It would still work for a bar, um, a bar graph. Another type of bar graph that we can do is by having a, we can do a survey of students and we can ask them what they're different, uh, um, if they have any pets at home. And so we can look at the number of students and the actual uh, types of pets that they have. Uh, and we can choose dogs, cats, frogs, fish, um, and we can, or we can group them in categories in terms of mammals or reptiles um, or insects, and we can then graph the numbers that are found in each of those categories. So we could just uh, guess dogs, uh, cats, and uh, let's say it's a particularly interesting class and they like a lot of reptiles. I don't know. Um, but we can organize our categories in different ways, but we're showing different categories for a bar graph. In more um, difficult examples are when we have something like a stacked bar graph. So this is, for example, when we, when we look at uh, the combination of boys and girls in a particular class, and we see how their, in, how their interests vary. So for example, if we take the favorite sport of grade eight students, and we look at um, girls and boys, we see that the majority of the class, or so most, of the cl most number of students prefer basketball, a lot uh, prefer badminton, and a little bit less uh, prefer volleyball. But then if we look at the distribution of girls and boys, within that we can also see and stack those or we can look, compare those bars within it as well this is a little bit difficult because it's difficult to compare the top bars because they don't have the same start and end value so it is a little bit tricky to use that kind of a graph instead of that kind of graph we could then use a double bar graph which means we look at it side by side and the benefit of a side by side graph is that we're able to compare the same start value at zero. So which we can compare two different sets of data, so French and German, over a period of time and the percent of people with good knowledge of that language. And you can see over time, you can look at the French bar and see how it increases and decreases and increases again. And we can look at German as well and see the different trends in both of those languages. We could, because of this circumstance that it's over time, we should be using a line graph. But in this case, because we're, um, we wanted to compare them side by side, we could use a bar graph as well. So there's many different graphs that you can use for the same example. So in this case, this is two sets of information. So two sets of information for the same category. So those are the different types of bar graphs that we can see. Now there's a special type of bar graph that we have in grade eight, and that's the histogram. So if we look at the histogram right now, what a histogram is, is a, is a way to show a continuous comparison in one category. So the category that we have here is age but we're looking at a continuous category that ranges from zero to 90. And what we're doing it is we're chunking the, um, this comparison into discrete groups. So for this example, we see here that the age is chunked from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, etc., all the way up to 90. And then we have the frequency of patients that are found in the y-axis. So we can see that the increase and the decrease within, the, within those actual groups. So we'll be, looking that, we'll be looking at histograms a little bit more in grade 8. 
as well here's another example of jumping jacks and the number of jumping jacks that uh, that person can uh, complete so if we look at the number of jumping jacks and then how many people uh, fall within that category um, we can see that most people can complete between 31 and 40 jumping jacks so that's another example of showing a continue a continuous um, scale of jumping jacks from 1 to 60 and then how many fall under that category. The third example that we'll be looking at is the pictograph and a pictograph is just an easier visual representation of a bar graph. And why someone might want to use it is to grab the reader's attention. Uh, you might see it a lot in magazines especially in websites if you want to uh, have people look at the information very quickly. Uh, then you can use a pictograph. The most important thing that you need to have in a pictograph is a legend. You need to say how many um, how many is each of these blocks worth. So in this case, each one of these ice cream bars is worth 100 ice cream bars in total. And another example of a pictograph might be this one here, where I have the number of visitors that are visiting a particular attraction, where one little person represents 500 visitors, and you can see that the most number of visitors at this particular attraction was in, in March. Now, another graph that we're going to be looking at is the line graph. And the main reason of using the line graph is to observe a trend. So a trend means something that changes over another of over a period of time. Time is normally the independent vari variable because we can control uh, we can control time. So which means if we can control uh, time, then it's normally the independent variable. What changes because of that? So the water effect, a temperature is, depends on how long you heat it for. Um, that's when that one becomes the dependent variable. So in this case, we see a very simple graph here that the longer I heat this water, the hotter that water gets. Now, unfortunately, this graph is a little misleading because it looks like it's a straight correlation, which means that this will continue on forever in the same direction. However, we know through science that this is actually false because heated water Water cannot go above 100 degrees Celsius. It turns into steam at that point, um, unless it has some other chemicals in it. So this graph actually will start to plateau, which means it will flatten out at a certain point. So it's a little bit of a misleading graph, but you can still use it to observe the trend that the longer you heat something, the temperature will go up. Here's another special type of line graph, which is called a double line or triple line graph, where you have multiple um, you have multiple sets of data. So in this case, multiple examples that I'm graphing all on the same chart. So if we look here, that again our x-axis is an independent variable, which is time. Line graphs tend to have time as the independent variable. In this time, in this case, it's years. And so as we see in the course of over time, then we see that these uh, particular resorts are either making more money or less money than they were in the previous year. Hawaiian Club, for example, made a lot of money in 1994, but then in 1995 didn't make as much money, whereas Bahama Beach has been increasing in its amount of revenue or how much it's been making over some time. And we could predict that over time, Bahama Beach might overtake Hawaiian Club in terms of its actual uh, revenue. French Riviera, on the other hand, has been slightly decreasing, however, as been maintaining a, uh, a quite stable revenue over the past three years or between 1993 and 1995. So there's a lot that you can take from this graph. You can analyze a lot of it using a line graph and you can come up with a lot of different conclusions about that. I'll give you another example of a line graph. So this is another one here where we have the average waiting time for registration for a university on different days of the week. Um, and so the waiting time here, and then we have the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we can see that over time, we can see a trend of decreasing values and then increasing values. And we can come up with lots of different reasons why Monday tends to have the long, longest waiting time, why Wednesday would have the lowest, and why Friday, or why it would increase again towards Friday. So there's many different conclusions that you can come up with or that you can kind of hypothesize to um, explain that data. The second last type of example is similar to a line graph and that's a scatter plot. And a scatter plot is a really important graph because this is used to determine if a relationship exists between two variables or more. 
So for example, here we're looking at age and we're also looking at yearly income and we're seeing whether or not there's a relationship uh, between how old you are and how much you make. And so what you can do is you can survey lots of different people, ask them their age, ask them their annual income. Uh, in this case, this ranges from $10,000 to $70,000. And you can plot their income on a, on a graph and you can see whether or not there's a trend of whether or not someone who is older also makes more money. If it does, that means we can create kind of like this line and this special line we call a trend line. And this trend line shows whether or not there might be a relationship. The closer the points are to this, we call it a strong relationship. If the farther away the points are from this line, we call it a weak relationship. And also because it's moving up, we call this a positive relationship. Or a positive correlation is kind of the fancier word. You can also just use the word relationship. Because the lines are kind of still scattered around, I would call this one a weak positive relationship or correlation in this case. There are lots of different examples where there may or may not be a correlation. So here are some examples of correlation or non-correlation. So in this example here, we see no correlation because the dots are pretty much scattered everywhere. In this one, we have a kind of trend line that we can make here. This means that we kind of have um, a positive correlation, which means when one goes up, the other goes up. So, Or you can think of it as I'm climbing a hill. It's a positive relationship because both are increasing at the same time. In this example, I have both when one is increasing, then the other is decreasing. So an example of this one might be um, the amount of exercise uh, related to the amount of body fat of a person. So the more exercise that someone has, the less body fat that they might have. We call this a negative correlation or a negative relationship. In this one example here, we kind of have a, almost a relationship but no relationship. Similar to these, we won't be looking at examples like this in our class, so we can just ignore these. And let's just look at a couple more examples of scatter plots. So we here we have here the difference between a strong negative re uh, relationship and a weak negative relationship. So notice how these dots are very close to this line, whereas in this one, I have the dots are much further apart from this line. So we have a strong relationship means that it's very, very close together. It's um, when one increases, the other one uh, increases at a, at a at a very, um, uh, without, without a lot of variety. Whereas in a weak one, you might have some more variety and in no correlation, I can't draw any line at all because when one increases, it doesn't relate to the other one. So that one, an example of a no correlation uh, might be the number of hours that you study at home um, compared to the number of windows that are at your house. It's, there's probably no relationship between the two. You can study for a long time and it's unrelated to the number of windows that you might have. However, in some circumstances, there might be a relationship between the two. The last example that we'll be looking at is the pie chart or the pie graph. And what signifies the pie graph or the pie chart, it determines how um, it's used to compare different parts of a whole amount or it's to see how the whole amount is divided into smaller parts. So in this example here, I have the whole amount of all the different types of movies that exist, and then, uh, well, not that exist, but that I chose in my survey, and then how many people, and then the percentages of each of those people. It's really difficult to create this without using some sort of scale factor to the number of degrees in a circle, or you can use Excel as well to help you with the calculations to create a pie chart. But it's really handy because you can see how it's divided, and you can see without even looking at the numbers which pieces of the pie are the larger ones and which ones are the smaller uh, pieces of the pie. Another example would be, uh, let's take a look at this, the most played video game consoles. So which one of these two examples would be um, more uh, e would be more interesting to look at? So I have, for example, uh, let's just take, let's just zoom out a little bit here so we can get both on the same page. So if I have here the different types of um, video game consoles, I can either do it in a bar graph as such and just I can compare each, uh, each bar or I can change it into a pie chart and it looks much easier to compare the pieces of the pie when they're all part of the 
the video game console families, we can see that PlayStation 2, well, this is a pretty old um, survey because this is 2008, so uh, PS3 didn't emerge from the market yet. But we're looking at 2008, and so we're seeing that a lot of people were playing their PS2s. Um, uh, several people were playing Xbox 360, um, and the Wii um, only had 14%. It'd be curious if we did this survey now in 2012 uh, to see whether or not we have a variety of answers for this. But as you can see, the pie chart does give a uh, a more interesting, just like a pict pictograph, a more interesting way of comparing parts of the whole. So as you saw here, let's just review. We looked at the bar graph. We looked at the uh, double bar graph. We looked at the histogram. We looked at the pictogram or pictograph. We also looked at line graphs and scatter plots. We looked at the double line graph also. And then the last one we looked at was the pie chart. So these six t different charts, make sure you take a look at why we would use one over the other and looking at different examples from the text to see when you would want to choose one over the other. So I know this was a, a tough lesson, pretty long lesson. You didn't have to take down everything, but as long as you get a sense of the six types of graphs, why we use them, and uh, then you'll be able to make better choices when you make your own graph.